right, let's move on to kind of the next couple teams. I think these this is going to be very interesting. Um, yeah, this is where we start to change things up. Can we all agree that this is clearly a tier jump in teams in the East? Like, I think past these three, everybody is way better. Most definitely, yeah. yeah. All right, Brad, do you want to lead us off? Yeah, I had a hard time with this one. I I couldn't decide if it was the Knicks, uh, spoiler alert, or the Magic. Um, <laughs> Oof. Oof. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, but yeah, I'm gonna go with number twelve, uh, Orlando Magic. Um, okay. I think that, yeah, I think that losing Fultz hurts them. I think if they had Fultz, I probably would have had them above the Knicks. But they lost Fultz. Gary Harris is also out. Um, those are two people who are gonna help um, them win games. I love Paulo. I think he's a culture changer, and I think he'll mm-hmm. help them win a bunch, you know, a bunch of games in the future. But he has to get his feet wet, get some yeah. experience, and their roster still isn't that good besides their starting five. So. Bernie, I'm gonna let you go next because I'm not sure if I'm I'm crazy for my twelve. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think for my twelve, I have the Detroit Pistons. I kind of went. Okay, and- that's who Whoa. I have. To- that's who what? I have to- and Whoa. and I need you to hear me. I, like I love Kate and I love Isaiah Stewart. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this roster has gotten a little bit better now that they have Bogdanovich. Actually, I you know adds that veteran leadership. Kemba Walker, it's still up in the air whether he's going to be on that team or not. Um. But I just think for me, who else do you have with Cade Cunningham? I think Sadiq Bey is a great player, but I don't think he's someone that is going to be like your second guy. You have Killian Hayes, who you're still hoping can be something in this league. I still am not convinced with Killian Hayes. I still think that he has a lot of growing to do. And I, I just don't know if the, I don't know. If, I don't think it's going to be this year with him. Um, but I think that's the reason why you drafted Jaden Ivey. So he can kind of take over that situation. And then, of course, you have Jalen Duran, who, again, I've been super high on Jalen Duran. Um, and so I think that for this team, I think it's a good team, but it's still a very young team, still a team that needs to grow and mature. Um, and again, I'm not the biggest Marvin Bagley guy, so uh, I'd rather have Jalen Duran in there, in my opinion. So I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm uh, biased, or maybe I'm different for that one. But I I just think that this team is solid, but I still think that they have a little bit more room to grow, but I think they're in the right direction of where they should go for the, for the future. I I really do like this team. I like the roster, but I still think that there is a lot of room to grow for this team. Yeah. I, uh, I have them at 12 too. uh, Detroit, uh, this, I really struggled putting them at 12 because they're definitely like top five league pass team for me this season. I'm probably going to end up watching like more Detroit than just about any other team, not named the Knicks this year just really interested with all their their young players but that's kind of the crux of the issue that's why i put them this low is just Mm -hmm. all their best players are so so young and they haven't really done anything yet so while i think this team could easily jump up a couple spots like i could see this team as a play-in team easily i'm not i wouldn't be shocked by any stretch of the imagination it's just they're all so young. The one thing that really scares me is Cade. I think Cade is so different, man. He have you got have you guys seen Cade? Have you seen him? He's, he's a beast. Huge. He's yeah, he's a beast. Huge. No. That's why I like told you he was the top pick that year. That's why I told yeah. you. 230. I mean, this dude is built like a like a forward, like an actual, like he could almost play the four on a certain on you know, small ball teams. He's so big. So and there, there's something about Cade where, you know, it's the opposite of those other guys we were talking about, like Lamelo and, you know, Bradley Beal. Like, I think Cade is mm-hmm. the definition of a winning player. Like, he is going to lead this team to games or to wins that they shouldn't have gotten. He did it last season. I mean, he, he put up a stat line for a full month last season that nobody's ever done, I don't think. I think he was doing – I think it was 24-7-7 seven and seven for a rookie for an entire month, and that's just – I mean, that's mind boggling considering he missed the first month of the season and, you know, you guys get it. But I like a lot of the youth on this team. I'm still not completely gone on Killian Hayes. I think he still is a solid defender. It's just his shooting is just miserable. Uh, But he's still a he's still he's a complimentary piece still to this team, because I think Jaden Ivey by the end of the season, whatever the, the lineup ends up shaking up to be like. I think that combo of Ivy and Cunningham is going to be pretty lethal in time, especially with Duran down low. I Mm -hmm. I like this team a lot. It's just, like I said, the youth of it. Mm -hmm. They're so, so young, not very much experience. 
There's a couple players on the team I don't I'm not super crazy about. I don't really know why they went and got Bogdanovich. I mean, I get it in theory, but he just doesn't game score. I mean, he's a good player. It's just there's more you need more time for your young guys to play anyway. Right now, what's the point of going to get a guy like that that could be helping a championship team? Sure, I get it, but um some of their older players, the contracts they have, they keep these guys. I don't, I don't really understand what the what the look is, but I, I think they improved drastically over the mm-hmm. off season. It's just, I like some of these teams ahead of them as far as the consistency of some of the vets on their team a little bit more. <clears throat> Nobody, what's num- what's anybody's number eleven? My number eleven. I'll let me drop my number eleven. We'll move on. This is where I'm definitely going to make Raptors. some people mad. No, <laughs> I'm going to make people mad with this one. I know, and I should have learned my lesson last season. Probably, I put this team way lower than they they really should have been if it wasn't for injuries. But I'm going to do it again because I don't like what I've seen. Chicago is number 11 for me. Whoa, Whoa. number 11. I'm 11. sorry, Whoa. Chicago Whoa. Bulls fans. I'm sorry. I know it's controversial. I know. I just... My brother would lose his mind. Wow, Yannick <laughs> loves the Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just don't see it, man. I just don't see it. I, I don't like a lot of the things that have happened for them the offseason. I think this Lonzo thing is a pretty big deal. Agreed, uh, yeah. Whether or not he ends up even playing this season is up in the air. And I think that that is like a huge concern. He's so important to this team's playmaking as far as just being their primary ball handler. And just the defense he brings is so critical to their team. Like Mm -hmm. once he, once they lost him last season, they were a completely different squad without Mm -hmm. Lonzo for the second half of the season. Um, And I will say too, you know, this is another one of those kind of, I, I'm maybe I'm just reading the tea leaves too much. I've been known to do do such with these basketball teams. I think they're going to have a pretty messy first half of the season, and I could see them as a sneaky trade at the deadline type of team, like a seller. I could see like I'm not a big Vucevic fan. I think he's been pretty dreadful since he's been there in terms of what they gave up for him. We talked about that a lot last time, uh, or a couple a couple uh, streams ago. We talked about how bad that trade was for Chicago. And I, I just don't think Vucevic is very good personally. Like I think he's solid, but he's definitely is not gonna, you know, patch up as many holes as this team has. And I, dude, I think DeRozan could go this season. I think that there's a chance if things are going really poorly for them, they just make the move. I mean, he's 34, 35 almost. He still makes a ton of money. He's got two years left. And if they're just bad, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if he went. So. This is one of those ones, if there's anyone on here that I'm scared that's going to make me look like an absolute idiot because I put them so low, it's this team. It really <laughs> is because they could be good. They genuinely could be fine. It's just I, I just don't see it. I think they're bad. I don't. I mean, I don't have them too far off from where you do. No. But at, at 11, I have the Knicks. Um, it's probably more fair. The <laughs> probably, yeah, I just, yeah, I think their roster is pretty bad looking at it. They got the trio of lefties who can't shoot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, I, Tibbs as a coach, too. I really don't like Tibbs as a coach. I thought they should have, you know, moved on from him. I don't even know why he's still coaching the NBA. He won't play his young players. Toppin is actually good. I think they when they had a lineup of um, Barrett, Toppin, and Randall, they were actually winning those minutes. But for some reason, he won't play Toppin. Um, even this year, he doesn't want to start him. Um you know, Mitchell Robinson is a little injury prone, so that's tough to have as a starting center. But they picked up Hartenstein, who's a good backup center. But I just don't see how they mesh on offense or defense. You know, they're kind of they don't have a direction. They have all these vets. They have these young guys they have to develop. They paid RJ, so RJ's development is important. But yeah, they just don't have any direction. They still have Julius Randle. If they, if a team was going to sell, I would say it'd be the Knicks too. I don't know why Julius Randle is still on this roster, honestly. No, I mean. The, the one thing I'll say, and I don't have them too far off. I think I have them as my 10th team, I think, from, from this uh, from this thing. Um, I, I think the problem with the Knicks, and, you know, when I really looked at that media day photo with with Brunson, Randall, and uh, RJ, I, I think it doesn't scream like they're ready to go back to where they were a couple years ago, or two years ago now, where they were in the top, what was it, top four, top five? Top four, I, yeah. Top four. Yeah, four mm-hmm. 
because I think for me, it comes down back to Julius Randle, who again, which Julius Randle are you, are you going to get this year? Are you going to get the Julius Randle that played for a contract two years ago? Or are you going to get this Julius Randle this year, which is kind of like an inconsistent guy takes, you know, takes a lot of, I would say bad shots. And I understand that maybe there might be times where he has to, because he feels that he's the only one that can really do anything on the offensive end or defensive end. Um, but you know, I, I really do think as a, if I was a Knicks fan, I'd be frustrated with the way that this roster has been constructed. Again, we know what the Knicks plan was a couple years back. We knew it was to get Kevin Durant and Zion Williamson and all that stuff was supposed to line up. The stars were supposed to align for this team and it didn't. <laughs> and it, and just like I, the league. exactly. And I just think that with, with the Knicks, you know, the real question now becomes what do you think of, and you know, we have, luckily we have a Knicks fan right with us. You know, <laughs> what, what do we think of RJ Barrett? Does RJ Barrett move the barometer for you to say, this guy is going to be an all-star this year because at the end of the day, you paid him like an all-star. Now it's time to see if he can be an all-star. And so, you know, I kind of uh, leave the floor to you, Pete. I mean, is RJ Barrett going to be an all-star this year? Uh, I would do honestly, first of all, I'd push back a little bit. I don't think he's paid necessarily like an all-star. His contract is pretty reasonable. All things considered. I mean, he's making $30 million a year. Some people, I mean, you look at that compared to other contracts that are getting handed out. That's half of some of these actual all-star players. He got, he got the max for the extension, right? No, like almost max for the extension. Oh, he got four, four for one twenty. Which is, I think it's about 30 mil less than the max or 20 mil. Oh, okay. Yeah. 20 mil, something. That's not too which, bad. Which to me, I, I love that contract. I think it shows that he he understands that he needs to play just a little bit more, you know, consistent offensive basketball if he's trying to get to that max contract, get to that all star level player uh, caliber contract. Um, but here's the thing I think RJ is the definition of a late bloomer in the NBA. I don't necessarily know if this is the season where he breaks out and is an all-star, but I do think he has it in him. I think he will be a multiple-time all-star in his career at some point. Um, and that that goes down to a few things. I think defensively, RJ is so incredibly underrated in the NBA. He can really move around on the perimeter, guard a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, last season, I, I'll be honest with you guys. I have the Knicks at number nine. People might say homer pick. I just think they're a play-in team. I think that people are going to be genuinely shocked at how much of a difference Brunson is going to make. And this is not saying, hey, let me ride hard for Brunson and say he's that great. I just think people don't understand how bad the playmaking was for the Knicks last season. It was so atrocious. They did not have whatever you thought about Boston Celtics basketball as far as ball handling and playmaking from the point guard position. It was 35% of that last season for the Knicks, probably. It was so <laughs> terrible. Because you're you're running these games where you have quickly, quickly and Alec Burks were our point guards last season. Those are two guys that have never played point guard in their entire careers before, especially at the NBA level. And they just got thrown into the position like last second as the season was coming into, into frame last year. So I think the difference of having Brunson is going to make just leaps and bounds of difference for RJ's offensive game as far as getting him open looks. He's not necessarily the most fully developed creator for himself mm -hmm. at this point. He's just not. He's not. But with some help, somebody who can get him better looks, certainly. And that's the thing with Randall, too. Like, Randall, whatever you think of Randall, I was screaming from the mountaintops how much I hated Randall last season. And I just mm -hmm. had to take a deep breath and realize, like, this <laughs> dude is is – even more so than RJ, not really capable of creating his own shots. Like he, he had a, a weird stretch the year before where he was all NBA. He deserved every vote for all NBA. He got that season. He was incredibly good. But the problem is, is when you leave him to his own devices, he's just going to spin around over and over in the paint and <laughs> just take these ugly shots. He just can't do that on his own. So I, I, I think they're going to take a step forward. And I, as much as you guys don't like Tibbs and the roster, I think they actually have one of the better young cores in basketball as far as just depth alone. Like a lot of their young players are solid players. Like Miles McBride is not going to get any minutes for this team. He's better oh, he's than so that. He's so good. 
He's, he's better, better than that. He should minutes. get. That's my problem time. with Tibbs. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's the thing. Yeah. But they, they're also not really constructed to have. They have so many guards that it it's tough to put it's Miles to, McBride into these situations. It's time Separate. to sell some of those guys. Sell some. They of need. Them. They Fournier. need to. Got to go. And and you know, I was just in the some Knicks forums the other day. I shouldn't admit to this debating with people, <laughs> but you know, people people are freaking out about Fournier starting but Fournier needs to start this season because we need to move off of Fournier and if we bench Fournier from game one there's nobody trading for Fournier in the NBA we would have to just buy him out and let him go but if he starts the season with better playmaking from Brunson and the other players around him are getting better looks too he's going to look better as well that's the thing his contract isn't untradeable but if he's a bench player, if he's a role player for your team, he's just not going to get enough looks to build up his stock a little bit. And whatever that might be, I think Fournier, if even the Boston Celtics the season before, is worth something, whether it's just like a second or, you know, garbage players. You you could move him. But I think in time this team will take a little bit better shape. I think, like, once Grimes starts playing more – People are going to be surprised at how good he is. I mean, that was the one of the big jokes with the not making the Donovan Mitchell trade is Grimes was pretty much untouchable for Tibbs in the front office. And, you know, you have to wonder, is he that good where Donovan Mitchell is not not worth it? I, I don't know the answer to that, but I think he's a much better defender than Donovan Mitchell. I think he has the potential to be really great, like just 3 and D type of, type of guard wing player. And he can guard like a ton of positions too, but... Enough of my Knicks rambling. I think they're the ninth <laughs> seed. Um, I actually have 10 as Orlando for me. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with that. What's everybody's 11? Did everybody say they're 11? Oh, sorry. My 11 was Orlando. So I had... I had Carolina's 11. Okay, I went, yeah, Brad, you said Knicks, Orlando for Bernie. Gotcha. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Okay, what about everybody's 10, just so I have them in my head? 10, I have Knicks. And you have Knicks. I have Orlando at ten. I got the Pistons. Pistons at number ten. Okay, so we're we're kind of in the similar boat with these three teams. I mean, somewhere in like they're they're good teams, but they're not necessarily going to be teams that necessarily break the top eight. Yeah, top yeah, top yeah. My argument for the Pistons being ten is I think they have better coaching than the Magic and the Knicks. I think Dwayne Casey will have them playing hard on defense, and then Cade Cunningham can lead them. Casey is a good coach. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, got coach of the year and then and then got fired. But yeah, yeah being a, another bad <laughs> bad firing in NBA history too. And he, I, I just heard him come out and say during media day that he thinks the the East is the best it's ever been or the best it's been since he's been coaching. And I can't disagree with him. I think this is very this true. Is the, be- yeah. the best Eastern Conference we've seen in probably in our lifetime. So that's for sure. All right. Yeah. So, so who are we putting at number uh, number twelve? At number 12, I have Detroit at number 12, and Bernie, you have Detroit at number 12. Yeah. I concede. I think they should go there. I had Chicago at 11. That's clearly not going to (laughs) stick, so we can just skip on that one. (laughs) Do we have Orlando? Is Orlando next? I had Orlando 10. I I got Knicks at 11, but I got Pistons. I'd be cool with putting Orlando higher because I believe in Paulo, Wendell, and Franz more than Julius, RJ, and Mitchell Robinson. Damn, that's tough for me to accept. I'm not sure. I, <laughs> I really I really feel what you're saying on a core level because I think Paolo is – you know, we, we went so hard on Orlando a couple streams ago when we were talking about guys who are going to make the jump this year. Yeah. Just, you know, teams that have potential. I can't really disagree with you, man. I, I'm fine with the Knicks at 11. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Orlando at 10. All right. Moving on.